Palmer has always strived to keep it that way. Privately, he was aghast when a compatriot of his, a former winner of the Open, arrived to collect the trophy still wearing his sun visor, but without even bothering to put on his jacket. Palmer is to play late on the opening day. After practice, autographs. Many are here simply because, after 30 years, this will be their last chance to see the great man. After resting, he returns, not entirely unlike the Queen Mother. Stepping onto the tee he first stepped onto in 1960, Arnold Palmer. In the wall, an ancient game. He'd hate to be tagged ancient because he's still as fit as a fiddle at 60. But my goodness, how regal he is uh, in the way he's played the game and handled his success. Playing today with one of the big three, Gary Player. How are you, Tip? Mr. Player, I'm fine, sir. This is game number 37 on the tee, Arnold Palmer. Well, he has been cheered at golf courses all around the world. And now on the first tee at the old course. Throughout his career, he's never held back that a great drive down towards the Spoken. The terrain is historic, romantic, and a minefield of blind hazards. Tip Anderson points them out without deference. They're old friends and have worked up quite a double act. <laughs> All these Scotchmen over here, none would kick this ball. <laughs> With golf balls flying everywhere, an open championship can feel like World War II to the local fauna. Obviously, a matter of huge concern to others present. On the 11th, Arnold Palmer won over par and my goodness, the memory goes back to 1961 when he won his first Open title at uh, Royal Birkdale, cheating the Gales, producing a performance of strength and uh, character on a week when the tented village was blown away. And 1962 when he was like the Pied Piper, the crowds following him down in the sunshine at Trun as he won his second title easily. And now here at St Andrews in 1990. You know, amazingly, at the age of 60, still putting well, still as enthusiastic about the game as he's ever been. It looks good. It's in. He's level par. Arnold Palmer is level par after 11. On this day, Palmer draws the biggest gallery. Among them, Winnie, who never, never exercises her privilege to walk inside the ropes. She's the loyalist member of Arnie's army, and she's seen this gesture a million times. It's not only a round of golf, it's a royal walkabout, and it illustrates Palmer's huge affinity with big crowds. After 15 holes, he's even par. If I go for the trap in the middle on the right, just to the right of the... what happens? It may not be Morecambe and Wise, but the crowd strained to eavesdrop the dialogue. Don't shake your head. Come and talk to me. I won that argument. <laughs> Well, you were right, Tim. <laughs> you know, he asks you every 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 club, every hole, but he doesn't necessarily have to take that. But he always asks you. Anyway. We've had a little bit of difference about the greens at St Andrews this this year, but. Uh, Hell, I must be reading these greens badly for 40 years or something, you know? <laughs> because he reckons that some of, the, some of the lines they give him are not quite true. Palmer, second shot to the 17th. One of the most difficult shots in goal. It's a difficult green to hit, but he's done it. Oh, no, he hasn't. It's 
down and onto the road. And not for the first time, Arnold Palmer through the green, but, uh, well, he doesn't look too worried about it, and certainly the crowd aren't worried. Just listen to him. I link him to another great, like Paul McCartney. I was fortunate enough to see his show. Same thing, if somebody shouts up, he would look at them and give them acknowledge them, and that's what Arnold does. If somebody screams on the crowd, he always gives them a little nod, a little wave, or that sort of thing, and, I, and people feel, God, I've got, I've got something back. I've got a rapport with my, my friend Arnold, you see, and I think that's, uh, you learn, I've learned from that. And so Faldo has, on his way to becoming the acknowledged best golfer in the world. I can move these stones that are movable, yeah. right? Hmm? Yeah. Deja vu. After 30 years, Palmer's back way started, on the road behind the 17th green at St Andrews. He made par only once in four rounds here, you may recall, in 1960. This year, he went for broke again, and another bogey five. Even so, as he processes up the 18th, Palmer has already consigned the 17th hole to the dustbin of history. I don't think there's ever been an athlete in the history of any sport, golf or anything else, who ever enjoyed being himself as much as Arnold does. Arnold Palmer absolutely loves being Arnold Palmer. For a one over part, 73, yes! He's never turned down an autograph. He's never turned down a request to do anything. Years ago, when he got very famous and very rich and very popular, he used to try to put things off on Mark McCormick, his old friend and his agent. Somebody would come up to Arnold and say, could you come to a charity dinner? Could you play in my outing? Could you play in my pro-am? And Arnold used to try to get away with saying, check with Mark. But if you waited five seconds and asked him again, he'd kind of smile and say, oh, heck, let's do it. So he was a pushover, which is also part of his charm. In some respects, possibly. Do you want him today? No, just when you're ready. Here, he's been asked to contribute some Palmer memorabilia to the new golf museum at St. Andrews. He never refuses. Okay, these are both clubs that I used in the uh, 60 Open here at St. Andrews. Oh, wonderful. One is the putter and one is the pitching Great. Oh, yeah. Great. Does his wife ever resent the requests, the demands, the pleas, the intrusions? Very good. I feel sometimes that uh, he, he doesn't realize why he's so tired, but I think that it's because he does so much more than most of the golfers, particularly in signing autographs and giving interviews and so forth. I realize that just playing golf is only a small part of it. We go through those stands right there and, and uh, sign every autograph and enjoy it, actually enjoy it. And, uh, and I don't mean that a lot of us don't, but. Uh, he has weathered all that and does enjoy it for so long. And, and I don't mean to sound, again, that other players don't enjoy it, but he actually does enjoy it. He enjoys people. Or maybe he doesn't show irritation when he's entitled to it. Being grabbed like a brother by a total stranger could well earn a burst of invective from a less celebrated sportsman. Palmer gently disengages himself and walks on, still signing. Meanwhile, there are fireworks from the modern generation. Greg Norman, to end the first day, joint leader. Nick Faldo, just a shot back.